Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to go into the dark world of medicine and these dirty doctors, aka dirty dogs, because I've been watching some really crazy um, footage and just um, looking up different stories. And also there's a movie out called A Dangerous Method, which goes into the history of Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung is his name. Um, yes, all these progenitors of what we deem normal today um, weren't very honorable at all. And they actually um, were sexually active with their patients. A lot of what they do to, um, you know, diagnose, let's just say, very questionable. And so I tell people, you really have to proceed with caution in these institutions because we trust our children to these people. We trust our lives to these people. I've heard so many stories. I've heard people wake up in the middle of anesthesia and they were being fondled, let's just say. So um, I made a vid um, talking about how pap smears are a useless perverted ritual, which I stand by because the more you delve into some of these stories, the more you're just like, wow, it is <clears throat> very disheartening. And um, if you think, you know, all physicians are so great, hold it right there because the Bible calls out in Job chapter 13, verse 4, forgers of lies, but you are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value. So just because they call themselves a doctor, which back in the day, you know, you can have a PhD and be considered a doctor. That's just a sort of teacher, right? Um, these medical physicians that deal with allopathy, which is surgery, chemicals, you know what I mean? It's like oh, human mutilation radiation or chemicals is that really what healing is all about i mean look at the nation right now how sick everybody is how disturbed everybody is and yeah you got a lot of women who have been taken advantage of not realizing that a lot of these doctors they just dirty dogs why would one want to go into gynecology if they're a male unless you know they already have some preclusions because a lot of these guys are very unattractive some attractive that's fine but like you know they'll get into these fields and take advantage of women who would you know, want nothing to do with them in reality um, a lot of them have like perverted mentalities you know if um, you know I'm sure there are some that have honor but I don't see any that would be in gynecology because a real um, so-called physician of health would be all about holistic medicine. Um, but you do get a lot of doctor death scenario and whatnot. Have you guys ever seen this comic? Just to show you, I mean, we get terms like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So if you think, oh, they're only just good. They could never do any wrong. What's he holding in his hand that's being pushed right now? Mm-hmm. And... They love doing, you know, they look at people like objects. It doesn't matter who it is. I found this one really interesting, too, because of the whole mask thing. It's called Death Head Guy. Isn't that weird? You see a lot with these comics, too. They really tell you a story. That's from Dark Horse Comics. But you see the mask, and it says, In the woods, they found a mask at home. He'll find them. Like when you wear the mask, it's like marking you. So I never bought into that stuff because it was more, it seemed very ritualistic. But, you know, anytime you try to tell people about it, it's like, no, no. And if you haven't watched this movie, but it's funny because the truth will come out like after these pigs pass away. Because you're such cowards, you know, they, they try to um, mask their perversions. And these are the people that are still being taught in textbooks as like some type of baseline in these intellectual communities. So that's why when anybody quotes like certain, you know, intel so-called intellectuals, I want to laugh so hard. I'm like, you mean those perverts? You mean those idiots? Oh, please. And um, it really goes into the history. Um, let me go back. 
because I can read some of the plot line because um, I read some of the plot and I'm like, wow, it really made you think of the history of gynecology and the really questionable methods they used, which these guys, you know, were no joke, were no joke and they're calling, you know, women hysterical, all, they're so quick to label us all kind of stuff. Now they're quick to label women bipolar and everything else. I mean, bullshit. And some of the so-called symptoms of this person in this movie sounded more like a damn demonic possession or a poisoning. I mean, it didn't even sound right because most women didn't even act like that. And so I'll read a little bit of the plot because you get a little bit. It says, in 1904, Sabina Spilrein arrives at the Burr Galsley, Galsy, the preeminent psychiatric hospital in Zurich, suffering from hysteria and begins a new course of treatment with the young Swiss doctor, Carl Jung, or Jung. He uses word association and dream interpretation as part of his approach to psychoanalysis and finds that Spilrein's condition was triggered by the humiliation and sexual arousal she felt as a child when her father spanked her naked. Jung and Chief of Medicine Eugene Bluer recognize Spilrein's intelligence and energy and allow her to assist them in their experiments. She measures the physical reactions of subjects during world word association to provide empirical data as a scientific basis for analysis. She soon learns that much of this new science is founded on the doctor's observations of themselves, each other, and their families, not just their patients. The doctors Jung and Freud correspond at length before they meet and begin sharing their dreams and analyzing each other. And Freud himself soon adopts Jung as his heir and agent. Jung finds in Spilrein a kindred spirit and their attraction deepens due to transference, which happens a lot in, in these patient, doctor, relationship almost like a professor and student i mean these are very intimate relationships that be should be reserved for a spouse or you know a parent or a child like once it goes to strangers it can get really weird jung resists the idea of cheating on his wife emma and breaking the taboo of sex with a patient but his resolved is weakened by the wild and unrepentant confidences of his new patient, Otto Gross, a brilliant, philandering, unstable psychoanalyst. Gross decries monogamy in general and suggests that resistance to transference is symptomatic of the repression of normal, healthy sexual impulses, exhorting Jun to indulge, indulge himself with abandon. I mean, it really goes into it has an affair and then it goes into all that time like at the end talks about, um, you know, the Nazis, you know, how one was starved to death in 1920, how Sigmund Freud died of cancer in London in 1939 after being driven out of Vienna by the Nazis. Spilrein trained a number of analysis in the Soviet Union before she and her two daughters were shot by the Nazis. It's crazy. And it says Jung emerged from a nervous breakdown to become, look at that. So after he, <laughs> these are the weirdos that are being taught in these universities still to this day. So this freak, this pervert has a nervous breakdown. Okay. He emerged. So he had it first. Then he became the world's leading psychology um, psychologist before dying in 1961. So just I'll tell you that it's all perverts and fraudulent so-called doctors. So sad. But um, yeah, this is well known that this happens constantly. I'll put this in the description just to give you 
a little idea that you really can't trust what's going on when you're sedated. You really, you just don't know. And it's getting scarier by the minute. That's why I don't have any procedures done. I don't buy into being, um, you know, used as a guinea pig because most of their tests and their all that stuff is all based on fraud, guys. It was all based on fraud. Freudian fraud. Hmm. Name is very similar. Yeah, he is a damn fraud. It says five doctors who abused patients while sedated. A prominent Manhattan doctor is arrested, charged with giving a patient a powerful anesthetic in the emergency room, then masturbating on her. The evidence, DNA found on her face, his defense, he had masturbated in a lounge before treating her and some semen was on his hand. It was a story made for the tabloids. One of those incidents the medical establishment often brushes off as freakishly rare when they come to the public's attention. But in a year-long national investigation, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution found scores of cases across the country of doctors accused of sexually violating patients who were at their most helpless, under anesthesia or sedated. The doctor's downfall, the patients weren't completely anesthetized or DNA was found or a witness spoke up and was believed. Years before Dr. Frederick Field was convicted of sexual abuse and rape for assaulting some dozen patients under anesthesia, another Oregon physician, David Oliver Burleson, was sentenced to five years in prison after being charged with sexually assaulting multiple patients under anesthesia. A California plastic surgeon, Peter Lei Chuan Chi, was accused of sexually assaulting dozens of female patients from ages 16 to 57, many of them while they were unconscious during post-operative exams. In 2010, he pleaded guilty to charges involving 36 patients and later was sentenced to six years in prison. So sad. This woman's one of the victims here. Her name is Erin Fonts, one of, the, of at least 12 women sexually assaulted by an anesthesiologist, Dr. Frederick Field, as they lay incapacitated at a hospital in the dailies. I think that's Oregon. Oh my, see that? So all, all different types. In Michigan, anesthesiologist Dennis Michael Tsikowski was accused of assaulting three female patients at a hospital when they were sedated in preparation for surgery. He is now a registered sex offender. In Texas, Dr. Aniruda Kitali negotiated a plea bargain to serve six months in jail after he admitted sexually assaulting two sedated patients and misdemeanor crimes of public lewdness and indecent exposure with two other women. He was found out when a woman awakening from anesthesia after a colonoscopy saw his penis and felt someone wipe her mouth and cheek. She went to police and a swab of her mouth and throat revealed sperm. Guys, this makes me so mad colonoscopy yeah there's so many idiots out there pushing that guys i really am telling you to be careful other doctors accused of violating unconscious patients were allowed to keep on practicing you hear that mm -hmm. they're still out there it's too much of a coven it's too much of a secret society guys it's like a cult you know, the best way to protect yourself is just don't give them any business. Don't, you know, put yourself on their altar. 
there are other things. I mean, if you are in a horrible accident, I mean, yeah, you have to just pray that the most high protects you, but what are you going to do? Like, um, you know, the fact that they want, that's why they push in so many of these di different procedures. And it's true. Like you're so at their mercy once you're asleep. Right. So, I mean, unless your life depends on it, I don't advocate doing any of these procedures because it does more harm than good. In Kentucky, medical authorities reinstated the license of a doctor who admitted to touching the breasts of anesthetized patients. In California, medical authorities decided they had no clear and convincing evidence when a patient reported that a doctor tried to engage in oral sex with her as he was administering anesthesia. Years later, the state revoked his license after when he was found to have sexually violated another patient. But his license was reinstated after he convinced the medical board of his remorse and rehabilitation. So you can't even count on the medical board for a damn thing. They're a bunch of bums and they allowed this evil to proliferate because no amount of this, okay, that's great. You can be remorseful, but you ain't going to be around patients again. You sure ain't going to have a so-called license again. You sure shouldn't be allowed to practice again. Okay, but there you go. The system of perpetuated abuse. We have institutionalized abuse. That's what's going on. Alabama reinstated the license of a doctor accused of sexual misconduct with several patients, including pa placing his hands in a patient's vagina as anesthesia began. Those doctors were among more than 2,400 the AJC found were publicly sanctioned by medical authorities after being accused of sexually abusing patients. Is that freakishly rare? No one knows the extent of the problem. Yep, they found many cases too where they're concealed. You can click on that if you really want to see how it's so difficult to uncover says the Atlanta Journal Constitution in an analysis of public records from every state identified more than 3,100 doctors accused of mis sexual misconduct, including more than 2,400 doctors whose cases clearly involved patients. But the Atlanta Journal Constitution also found those numbers represent only a fraction of the doctors who had sexual violations since January 1st, 1999. Many violations never came to the attention of state regulators. In other cases, public board orders, for example, public documents issued by a state agency that discipline a doctor weren't posted on violations that did result in sanctions. So while the vast majority of the nation's 900,000 licensed physicians don't sexually abuse patients, no one knows the extent of the problem. So it tells you why. You know, of course, there's a lot of reasons. It says that they failed to report despite laws. Um, you know, clinics failed to report hospitals, of course, because um, there's a lot of collusion, a lot of secrecy. A lot of these nurses are in on it too. Um, by the time they even find out, you find out that they have way, way more cases. You understand? So if you want to go into that more, it says why sexual misconduct. It's actually embedded in this article here that I will put up if you want to get into that one. It's two, a two for one for you guys. But look at these nasty creeps. Just want people to know that they come in all shapes. <clears throat> Look at him. He looks like he could be like a Sunday school teacher, right? Yeah, a lot of them are in these schools, too. They look very unassuming. Look at this guy and that guy, right? You know, um, doesn't matter. It can, and these are just, you know, a few. So five doctors who abuse patients while sedated. So you go into the history of Guyana. It just tells you so much how it's just trash. 
Lion Ecology, just so you know, you learn a lot from, you know, and of course they want to like take your ovaries, they want to do this, it's all kind of like messed up stuff and they call it therapy, under the name of therapy, all freaking sad, um, sorry, and this is very barbaric, it's very, very, um, you know, exploitative of the human body, which is already made pristine. It's just that the Neanderthals don't know how to um, interpret the signals of the body. It's like they don't even understand how the body works. So they think they you can just chop off everything, right? I want I want to see you go to your car and start taking out the battery, the alternator, all the parts, and see if your car is going to move. Yeah, I want to see that. But we think we can do it to our bodies. So, you know, because these disgusting... Um, um, barbarians, they go into your vagina, they try to, you know, insert stuff into you, and they want you to, um, you know, they start to get you really, really scared. They start to make you think, oh, you, you're going to get cancer, you're going to get this, so we got to, like, scrape some stuff out, we got to send biopsies, even in your 20s. They're making you think that, um, you know, you're going to get cancer and that um, it's always about surgery and, you know, pushing these um, very, very scary treatments that it just never ends. So, you know, you have to like wake up to it. But there was a part here that was very interesting. I was trying to find the history. It tells you right here, um, right here, the father right here under history, which I found. I mean, they tell you it's all based on a fraud. And people think, oh, we're so smart. It's like so many years later. Like, no, people are slow because they don't um, learn from history. And they think because we're doing something now, it's like not based on some ancient fraud. And a lot of it is, which right here tells you this J. Marion Sims. And I love for all the so-called feminists, like, yeah, these are some like perverted guys that you know, just want an excuse to touch you and feel you up and to pretty much finger you, but like, you know, and do scientific experiments, can use you as a host, you don't even know. But the point is that um, they create all these so-called false diseases, so you need these useless doctor's visits so they can just, you know, get up in there and they tell you what, come in twice a year. When, like They want you in there all the damn time. And they act like they know your body more than you. I mean, it starts to get so obvious. That's why I like totally flipped out one day. And I was like, this is, I'm done with all of this. And I never looked back. And I'm better for it. Believe that. So this pig is widely considered the father of modern gynecology. Look at that now criticized for his practices because a lot of how they learned certain things was from abuse, abusing people. And it says here he develops some of his techniques by operating. Yeah, they'll do the craziest things. They'll do useless operations, like they'll treat you like a damn frog. I mean, you see how they treat frogs in these high schools. I never partook in that. That's another thing. So, like, you show, like, the people that think that's normal, they already are becoming, like, dehumanized already because they don't respect forms of life, you know, and how that's not right. So he developed all of these practices for those of you sending your young daughters, thinking that just because it happened to you that this is what you're supposed to do, just letting you know how this thing started. And how that there's many stories and that most of these so-called, you know, uh, legends that people look up to were nothing but fraudulent perverts. Um, so he operated on slaves, many of whom were not given anesthesia. Sims performed surgeries on 12 enslaved women in his homemade backyard hospital for four years. While performing these surgeries, he invited men, physicians, and students to watch invasive and painful procedures while the women were exposed. On one of the women named Anarka, he performed 30 surgeries without anesthesia. 
due to having so many enslaved women, he would rotate from one to another, continuously trying to perfect the repair of their fist, fistulas. Physicians and students lost interest in assistant Sims over the course of his backyard practice, and he recruited other enslaved women who were healing from their own surgeries to assist him. In 1855, Sims went on to found, look at that, Woman's Hospital in New York. The first hospital specifically for female disorders. Just let that marinate in your mind and in your spirit, how you got these, um, <clears throat> these animals, these are not, these are not real men and women who would do this to other people, and you got the term Sims, like in the Sims game, that name, look at this bastard, just remember that, very controversial figure, they found, you know, they always love, they're so obsessed with the female form, you notice that? have to make these institutions, these hospitals. So just giving you a little taste of, you know, the minds that created a lot of this stuff. And these doctors violate their oaths all the time. They're constantly doing harm. A lot of women, like you don't feel right when you go to these places for a reason. They make you feel like, and they actually put ideas in your head because a lot of the infections, a lot of the stuff is from like, you know, could be from using tampons because of the toxicity. There's a lot of things that cause that, but they'll make you think it could be your partner or it's this or it's that. And, you know, and like, and then you need all these drugs and then you need to be tested and they just put too many ideas in your head and they really do cause like too much panic. And they call women hysteria. It's all hysterical, hysterical. You know, now they're calling us bipolar. You're this, you're that. And even tells you, too, the historical treatment. How gross. Sex, of course. Pregnancy. Childbirth. What does this say? Proximal convulsions. Orgasms. They believed that, you know, stimulating a woman, putting their fingers in the vagina, you know, the kind of stuff they do today, you know, putting stuff in and out, in and out, hoping to, you know, create a proximal convulsion, will relax them and make them more, less hysterical. Isn't that nice? You know, isn't that nice? And over here it says um, Sigmund Freud, 1896, he was an Austrian site. So, psychiatrist published the etiology of hysteria. The paper explains how Freud believes his patient, his female patient's neurosis, which he labels hysteria, resulted from sexual abuse as children. That's probably partially true. A lot of people do have issues because they were um, exposed to some sexual trauma young and so it comes out in weird ways so obviously to have them relive that trauma and to make them like an object and to sexually exploit them may not be the very way to go it takes a lot of spiritual healing and a lot of like self-respect and not being objectified to get well but you know these guys you know they are they're the experts though Freud named the concept of physical symptoms resulting from childhood trauma hysterical conversion. Freud hypothesized that in order to cure hysteria, the patient must relive the experiences through imagination in the most vivid form while under light hypnosis. However, Freud later changed his theory. His new theory claim that his patients imagined the instances of sexual abuse, which were instead repressed childhood fantasies. By 1905, Freud retracted the theory of hysteria resulting from repressed childhood fantasies. Freud was also one of the first noted psychiatrists 
to attribute hysteria to men. He diagnosed himself with it, guys. He diagnosed himself with hysteria writing. He feared his work, exacerbated his condition. So these guys are the real madmen. They're mad as a hatter, but then they want to project their neurosis onto women. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what narcissists do? They project their bull crap onto you. So it's kind of funny how these people are trying to treat the same problem that they have. Does that even make sense to you? Mm. And there's just so many stories of crazy ass doctors, guys. So just to say, if you think, oh, they're all so good, you know, they're essential, they're heroes. Maybe they push that mantra in the media for a reason. Maybe just to try to, if it was so true, do they have to say it so much? Just saying. And I'm sure there's some good here and there, but I'm just saying the industry as a whole just attracts a certain type of people. And if you guys ever watch the movie American Mary, it really goes into the world of surgeons too, which, you know, is like a, another form of American psycho. So right here, it says, there's no mystery as to why doctors are seen as the most important members of society. But unfortunately, humanity has its share of heartbreak thanks to derailed medical practitioners. They say they are worse things on earth than one can imagine. Oh, what's he doing? But when medical angels turn to demons, even the most prolific imagination finds its limits. Below is a list of the 10 most evil doctors history has ever recorded. See, it tells you to try to avoid the ER. Dr. Walter Freeman, 1895 to 1972. Oh, I'm sorry about that ad. Walter Jackson Freeman II was an American doctor and member of the American Psychiatric Association. Although he's the only one on our list who hasn't performed a direct criminal practice on his patients, he can be blamed for harming as many as 3,400 people by using a very controversial and primitive medical technique, the lobotomy. His operations were performed by inserting a metal pick into the corner of each eye socket, moving it back and forth, and thereby severing the connections to the prefrontal cortex in the frontal lobes of the brain. This method did not require a neurosurgeon and could be performed outside of an operating room without the use of anesthesia. Freeman actually used his personal van as a surgery room, which he called the lobotomobile. That's pretty creepy, guys. So that, you know, that makes me think, oh, these weird white vans out there, you just don't know. And I was reading medical journals that said they weren't even given babies anesthesia for surgery until 1986 because they didn't believe they could feel pain. So if you think that these people know what the hell they're doing, most of them are just nuts. They're just treating you like that frog in science class in high school. It says, Dr. Freeman was finally banned from performing surgery after the death of some of his patients from brain hemorrhaging. Yep. Yeah. How about Dr. Linda Burfield, 1867 to 1938, starved patients for their money. Look at that. See? So women and men alike. This is what real witches look like. Dr. Linda Burfield demanded to be addressed as Dr. Hazard by her patients. Strangely enough, this didn't raise any red flags. She was not technically a doctor, having never graduated from medical school, yet worked as a medical clinic manager, as well as licensed medical practitioner in Washington State in the USA. She's infamous not necessarily for the number of lives she claimed, 
15 patients by official police records before the unconventional and dangerous methods she promoted for curing diseases. Burfield encouraged the idea that fasting cures almost all ailments from a simple cold to cancer. To this end, she had subjected her patients to a draconian diet that lacked basic nutritional elements. It included only two bowls of, bowls of tomato broth and one or two small oranges a day for a period as long as a month. Yeah, and these hospitals too, they give you like the worst nutrition. Just to show you, there's so many, I'm not gonna go through each one because this is more on like the history of like gynecology and how like there are dirty doctors. I mean, this is going into like real, real abuse and killing them and all that stuff. And that shows like, you know, the sexual assault is one thing, right guys? And then they go into like even worse situations which is super, super scary. Um, you know, I try to tell people, like, these physicians, not every physician has value. You know, um, because a lot of these fields are so particularly useless. They're not needed for good health. Good hygiene is needed for good health. A lot of women are not practicing good hygiene. They're sticking, like, whatever in there. They're being given birth control pills. That's been attributed to cervical changes and all that. But they won't tell you that they were giving you the stuff that was actually causing the problems. Because if you look at a lot of illnesses, a lot of it is tied to prescription drug use because as soon as you use a chemical, it starts to change your biological processes and st things start going haywire. But they won't tell you that. They'll be like, you need another procedure. We need to take another piece out. We, you know, oh, if you don't do this, you're gonna have the C word. They were trying to get me to believe everything under the sun. Once I got them out of my head and I told them, you know, I could smell the fraud for what it is. I was like, thank you for no thank you. Um, God's in charge of all our life clocks, you know. I guess I'll take my chances. And it's been over nine years, and it's like, if it was up to these idiots, I would have been half the woman I am today because they wouldn't have stopped. They wanted me to go in. They wanted to take out pieces of my cervix. I'm like, excuse me, I think I need that. And if I'm sick in any way, then I'll just change up what I'm doing. I just, you know, I stopped using certain things. I'm very holistic now. All natural remedies, no chemicals, not even an aspirin. I'll have to do a vid on the dangers of ibuprofen and what that does to your stomach. Everything that we think is normal is not normal. We were born into a world that was already perpetuated with a lot of deception. Even people who call themselves spiritual didn't, weren't we taught that, you know, there was going to be a great deception coming. We were born into it. And all these movies tell you the same thing. And then you tell people like it's all around you. They still fall for it. They still fall for somebody in that suit or whatever. They don't look at these sleazy doctors for what they are. You know, they'll go and they're like, if they're the same ethnos, if they're the same, you know, whatever. Oh, even better, right? It's like they have like this weird trauma bond with these people. They have a weird bias and they're just businessmen. You know what I mean? They're just there. They, a lot of them have a lot of debt. A lot of them have a lot of um, bills. A lot of them are freaking perverted. They're really, <laughs> I mean, a lot of them just really want to get their rocks off. They couldn't get the recognition that they thought they deserved in life. Maybe they were ignored. I don't freaking know. But I mean, there's just a lot of weird, um, there's books on it and stuff like his women pay. There's even novels and comics like talking about this weird um, doctor-patient inappropriate type of relationship, you know? You got woman's doctor, but when they say woman's doctor, it's not like woman's doctor, like to take care of women's needs. It's like, he's a ladies man. He was one man, one man in a world of lonely women. So basically gynecologists think like, what? They prey on what women who don't have men 
that are alert enough to tell them not to go there or don't have men at all because they want to just deem us hysterical. Like you go in there, maybe you have a child, you're overwhelmed. It can be whatever. And these creeps, <laughs> um, and they tell you, and then when that doesn't work, they want to scare you with the cancer and everything else. Get, guys, it's such a lie. All of the HPV stuff, they try to get everybody scared with. Everybody, um, we're born with different virus and bacteria. Virus and bacteria were around before we were. Okay, so that's just a part of life. They make you think something normal in your body is something to be scared of. <clears throat> and they only play on our ignorance. And they say the rate of so-called cervical cancer is like 1.00001%. It's so low that it doesn't warrant the amount of um, prodding, right? The prodding that they want us to do. And I'm telling you, watch this movie, 2011 movie. I just watched clips. It was, a, it was really, really interesting, guys, though. The premise, and it goes into Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud. And they, you know, overplay this character. Like, she, if you see her performance, you almost think, okay, you're either full of demons, you are cursed. Like, no one acts all freaking crazy like that. And, um... You know, I, I've met people who were molested as a child, and yeah, they may be highly sexual when they get older. That is one, um, it's a symptom of um, some type of dysregulation, so that needs to be addressed with a lot of spiritual healing, healing the parts of the self that was fragmented, okay, because these people were dehumanized, okay, so that's a very big blow, and then they go to a lot of the, sometimes they go to a pastor, sometimes they go to a counselor, it doesn't matter, and I'm not saying that it's all men, because there's a lot of women out there who have a predatory mindset, and that have also been put on blast for doing nasty things, right, and a lot of these people, you go to these people with complete confidence, not realizing it's a wolf in sheep sheep's clothing it's a trick bag okay there's a lot of great people online that can give you a lot of great feedback who can share their experiences um you know when i was healing from narcissistic abuse and all that because this society is so toxic and so narcissistic online help really helped me i'm a very private person so even doing these vids it's like takes a lot out of me but it's so important for me to warn people because i've seen it all and i see people <clears throat> putting their faith more in these strangers than they do in their loved ones who try to warn them and say hey guys this could be really dangerous you don't want to do it this sounds kind of creepy you know and a lot of these so-called doctors they come from germany look up project paperclip there's some like dark dark um skeletons there's many skeletons in their closet guys but yeah a lot of these sleazy doctors just be careful they're considered physicians of no value. And a lot of the um, tests that girls go for now were based on the minds of totally deranged perverts. Even Sigmund Freud himself said that he had um, hysteria. So isn't that funny? And it's usually like that. Like these abusers, these psychopaths, they try to say um, you have what they have right just so they can what well, put you in that box to do what they want with you you know because labels can carry a lot of weight so i just want people to you know have access to this article read it yourself i mean dna on the person's face guys we don't even know what's been done to us while we've been sedated a lot of people i mean who knows you could have like an infection later on and not understand that you know, you had some type of dirty pig messing with you. You could ha I mean, by the grace of God, a lot of these people woke up. But how about the ones who don't wake up? How about the children? How about the elderly? You know, don't get me started. I want you guys to be careful. And you're going to do what you want because you're grown. But just really keep these things in mind. And then just realize that we are in um, a generation that glorifies 
these type of people and act like, um, you know, they do no wrong and we put too much trust into them. And believe me, they know that they have a God complex and they want to sell you fear. They want to make you think that you need them. So you could just, and you know, it's some type of spell because no one else can do the things that these people can do to you and get away with it. I mean, what they do is downright almost attempted murder. They can slice you, they can dice you, they can poison you, they can, you know, even some of these people, they molested people and they were able to still practice. I mean, yeah, I guess, um, talk about being a gangster. I mean, there's no higher gangster than that. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty nasty how, um, this is even being allowed, but I just want people to have that. Be careful. Remember this first. Not all physicians have value. If they're telling you to do chemicals, they're telling you to do surgery, human mutilation, or radiation, they're a physician and no value, and you need to run far, far away from them. And especially if they're trying to get into your private parts, knowing damn well that's not going to increase your health, that's not going to prevent any type of disease. That's really for them to get their perverted little um, fantasies realized. And they're going to pay for that because I hope when they go to hell or they go to wherever they deserve to go in the underworld, that they get um, constantly taken advantage of day in and day out by a bigger and badder demon because so many people are being exploited and it needs to stop. So um, please be aware of these things and try to avoid these creeps at all costs. So have a great day, guys. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.